Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When you get up in the morning, there's nothing like a breakfast you'll really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. These giant ready-to-serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Shot through and through with swell nut-like flavor, too. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is good for you. Makes an economical deluxe family breakfast. Served in a jiffy. Tomorrow morning, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Summer had come to the Yukon. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police... Rain to a halt before the headquarters building in Dawson. Oh, there, oh, now. Easy. With Sergeant Preston was the great dog, King, who stood waiting as his master dismounted. Come on, King. We'll find out why the inspector sent for us. The inspector's waiting for you, Sergeant. Said for you to come right into his office. Thanks. Stay out here, King. Sergeant, glad to see you. Hello, Inspector. I understand you want to see me. Yes, I do. Sit down, Sergeant. Oh, thank you. Sergeant, there's trouble up at Forty Mile. Huh? Constable up there asked to have you and King come up there as soon as possible. Yes, sir. We'll start right away. What happened up there, do you know? Frankly, I don't, Sergeant. The message I received by Eskimo Runner from the Constable just said there was trouble. He'd like to have you and King there. I see. Sorry, I can't tell you what to expect, but... Constable Gordon wouldn't have sent for you unless it was something unusual. Yes, sir, I know. George Gordon's a very capable officer. Yes, he is, Sergeant. Incidentally, I tried to question the Eskimo who brought the message. Oh, huh? what was the result? Well, I got very little out of him. But his attitude struck me as being very strange. Strange? What do you mean, Inspector? The more I questioned him, the less he seemed inclined to answer. Though I felt sure he knew to a certain extent what the trouble is up there. Well, what makes you think he did know something about it? Well, he seemed very nervous and upset. To nearly every question, he gave the same answer. The same answer? That is strange. You'll think it even more strange when you hear what his answer was. It was, me not talk. Evil spirit maybe get angry at Kulak. Oh? Wonder what he meant by that? That's what I'd like very much to know, Sergeant. And what you'll have to find out when you get there. Well, whatever has happened seems to have aroused the superstition of the Eskimos up that way. That's right. But I can't figure it out, Sergeant. I hope you can after you get to 40 Mile. If there isn't anything else, sir, I'll be on my way. All right, Sergeant, and good luck to you and King. Whatever the trouble is, I know you two will settle it, if it can be settled. Thanks. We'll do our best, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sergeant. Come along, King. We have a long trip ahead of us. After going to his cabin in Dawson and making preparations, Sergeant Preston mounted his horse, and with King running alongside, they set out. It was the following evening when the Mountie and his big husky stopped at the constable's office in 40 miles. Hold there, hold now. Come on, gang. Sergeant Preston and King. I'm sure glad to see both of you. How are you, George? Fine, Sergeant. Hello there, fella. Both King and my horse can do with a bit of food and rest as soon as possible. Of course. We'll go to my cabin shortly. 
But I know you're anxious to know why I sent for you first. Why, yes, I am curious. You didn't give the inspector much information. Sit down, Sergeant. All right. I have very little to give. In fact, the whole thing is rather mysterious. Tell me about it. Well, Bear Creek is about ten miles from here. Huh? The trail runs along a rocky canyon for about two miles. That canyon, built smack up against the base of the cliff, is a deserted prospector's cabin. I see. First of all, during the past two months, travelers along the trail have reported seeing a mysterious light at night in that cabin. At first, some of them decided to stop there. But by the time they reached the cabin, the light was gone, and no one seemed to be there. Perhaps whoever was inside just didn't want visitors and didn't answer the door. No. You see, on three occasions, different men who passed there had stopped. After knocking at the door, they went inside. The door was not locked. Yet no one was inside at all, and there was no lamp in evidence. Well, that is mysterious. Finally, people began to be superstitious about the cabin and gave it a wide berth. But later, a few who hadn't heard about it stopped there and spent the night with unusual consequences. Such as what? Well, one of them was a trapper. He took his furs inside with him, then bolted the door and went to sleep. When he awoke, the furs were gone. Have you investigated the cabin yourself? Oh, sure. It's the usual thing, practically bare of furnishings except a table, chair, and the bunk. Moth-eaten caribou hides hang on the back wall, probably to keep out the dampness. Prospectors usually do that when they build a cabin against a cliff wall. It does keep out dampness. Yes. Well, I pounded all along the back wall to make sure it was solid. With the door bolted and the windows locked, no one could get in. Yet everyone who stopped there has had trouble. The cabin stands on a rock. There'd be no tracks of any kind of follow either. That's right. But three days ago, something even worse and more mysterious happened there. What was that? I came to my office here in the morning. Shortly after, a young French woman who lives at Big Creek with her husband came in. She was excited and upset as she told me the story. You must help me. You must. My Pierre, he's gone. Don't try to be calm, Mrs. Mullet, and tell me what's happened. Well... Two days ago, Pierre decided to come to Forty Mile to bring the gold he had taken from our claim during the winter. It was raining hard that day, so Pierre waited until late afternoon before he started. After the rain let up, Pierre did not come back yesterday as he planned to do. Maybe he was delayed in town. Oh, yes, first I thought that. Then a friend who had a nearby claim stopped at our cabin. He said he had met Pierre along the trail near the canyon. Pierre told him he was going to stop for the night at the deserted cabin there. I see. What else? Early this morning, I arrived in town. I asked at the bank, at the cafe, at the hotel, everywhere. But no one had seen Pierre at all, monsieur. Well, something has happened to him, I know it. Now, try to be calm, Mrs. Mullet. How is Pierre traveling? On horseback, monsieur. You have a horse outside? Oui, monsieur. I am frightened. I have heard strange things of that cabin in the canyon. But my Pierre, he just laugh and say not to be superstitious. Come on. We'll make some more inquiries around town. Then we'll ride up to the canyon and have a look in that cabin. Might be that Pierre is already at home now. You may have missed him somehow. Oh, but that is impossible. There is only one trail to Bear Creek. But I will go with you, monsieur. I will do anything to find Pierre. Well, George, did you find out anything about the missing Pierre? No. I asked around town without success. Then Mrs. Moulet and I rode to the cabin. She refused to go inside, so I went in alone. I found a hat there on the table, which Mrs. Moulet identified as Pierre's. Well, he wouldn't be apt to go off and leave his hat. That's what I figured. But what I couldn't figure was what happened to him and his horse. Pierre hasn't shown up yet. You think he might have decided to leave his wife for some reason or other? No, I don't believe that at all. They were devoted to each other. Hmm. What's more, Pierre Moulet is well known both in Forty Mile and at Bear Creek. He would have had to go one way or the other, and I feel sure someone would have seen him. Then there's that hat. Pierre never went anywhere without his hat. You said that other things had happened at that cabin before his disappearance. Yes. Besides the trapper who lost his furs, on two occasions, prospectors who stayed there in the locked cabin woke up to find their gold and supplies were gone. Everything seems to center around that deserted cabin. That's right, it does. I stayed there one night myself, but nothing happened at all. I sat up all night watching and listening. Come on, George. I'll give King and my horse some food, and then we'll ride to Bear Creek and talk to Mrs. Mullet. After that, we'll visit that mysterious cabin. 
About three hours later, Sergeant Preston with King and George Gordon arrived at Marie Moulet's cabin. The two Mounties drew rein and dismounted. Go, fellow, go now. Come on, King. Oh, Monsieur Gordon, you bring news of Pierre? No, Mrs. Moulet. I brought Sergeant Preston. He came over from Dawson City to help locate Pierre. How do you do, Mrs. Moulet? Oh, Sergeant, you must find him. You must. We'll do what we can. Do come inside. Oh, that big dog, will he? King won't hurt you. I'll need his help in finding your husband. Then bring him in, too. Thank you. Come on, King. I want to ask you a few questions, Mrs. Moulet. Oui. Did anyone know that Pierre was carrying gold? No one but myself, Sergeant. Pierre did not talk much of our business to others. I see. It's that awful cabin, Sergeant. I was afraid of it. But Pierre, he just laughed at me about my fears. Then he goes and stays there for the night. And when Monsieur the Constable smashed the bolt on the door and went in, but... he found Pierre's hat. Sergeant. Wait a minute. George, you didn't tell me you found the door bolted when you went to hunt for Pierre. I thought I'd mention it. That's the thing I can't understand. <laughs> Door and windows were locked from the inside. Yet I found that hat. And no trace of Pierre or his horse. The reason behind everything that's happened lies at that deserted cabin. We're going back there right now, and we won't leave until we find out just what that reason is. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Shot from guns. These three famous words mean a breakfast treat all ready to eat. The original, the one and only, Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Yes, these are giant-sized grains. I said giant size, And they actually are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. <laughs> Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are exploded up, 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 to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Yes, they're shot through and through with keen nut-like flavor, too. They're a thrifty deluxe breakfast treat that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full and add some fruit and milk or cream. Talk about good. More important, long hours at school and play call for a hearty breakfast. And Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice... Furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? You'll be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And to get the original crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and King had gone to Marie Moulet's cabin at Bear Creek with Constable Gordon. When Preston found out that the missing Pierre's hat had been found inside the cabin, though the doors and windows were locked when the constable investigated, he decided to go to the cabin and stay there until the mystery was solved. Leaving Mrs. Moulet's cabin, the two Mounties stopped by the trading post to get a few supplies. Hold there, hold there. Hold there. <laughs> Come on, King. There you are, Mr. Kendall. Anything else for you? No, uh, that's all. Well, looks like you got a reinforcements to run down those ghosts over in that cabin, Constable. They'll be mighty sorry ghosts when Sergeant Preston and this dog King track them down, Kendall. <laughs> there you hear that, Sam? He sent to Dawson City for the famous Sergeant Preston and his dog to waste her time looking for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've uh, heard of Preston before. I'm sure ahead of me there. I haven't heard of either of you before. Sergeant, this is Gus Kendall who runs a cafe in 40 Mile. Sam Mason works for him. Hi. Uh, glad to meet you, Monty. Once more, you're ahead of me. Huh? I, I don't get it. Forget it. Small talk. I didn't expect to run into you over here in Bear Creek this late in the evening, Gus. I well, came over with Sam on business, thinking of staking a claim up this way. Uh, 
Tell me, have you come to any conclusions about that cabin business? No, not yet. It's sure a mystery. Got all the prospectors around here nervous about going along that trail. Two of them up that way give up their claims and left already. Mighty funny business. Mighty funny. There's an explanation for everything. And we'll find one for the happenings at that cabin. Yeah, maybe you will sometime. But I guess even the constable got shook up a bit to find Willette's hat in a cabin that was locked up from the inside, hey, constable? I admit it had me baffled, Gus. Well, let's get going, Sam. we got to get back to 40 miles. All right. Seeing you all again. Go on. Go on. Goodbye, Kendall. Easy, fella. I don't like them either. They aren't very well liked around 40 Mile. Well, let's get the few supplies we want and then get going, George. We're wasting time. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and the constable rode the trail toward the mystery cabin in the canyon. We'll soon be at the cabin, George. I know. I hope you and King can straighten things out. As Mike the storekeeper said, some of the prospectors who have claims along the canyon have already moved out because of their fears. That fellow Kendall seems to keep up with the news. I was surprised he knew about you finding Pierre's hat in that luck cabin. So was I, since I haven't mentioned it to anyone. Oh? But I suppose Mrs. Mulattis talked about it in Bear Creek. I guess that's where he heard about it. Gus and Sam must have ridden along this trail ahead of us. They said they were on their way back to 40 Mile. That's right. Let's hurry a bit so we can be in that cabin a few hours before sunup. Get up there! Get him! Get him, boy! After a half an hour of fast riding, the two Mounties reined to a halt before the deserted cabin in the canyon. Oh, there. Oh, no. As they approached the cabin, Great Dog King suddenly caught the scent of the men who had been in the store at Bear Creek. He sniffed the ground, barking and growling, then went to the door of the cabin and whined as Preston stood a moment watching. What's King acting like that for, Sergeant? I have the feeling he's picked up Kendall's scent. They must have stopped here and dismounted. Let's look inside. Let's go in, George. King's sniffing all around the cabin. I wonder if the two did stop here. I'm inclined to say they did. But I can't figure out why they stayed so short a time unless they stopped just from curiosity. Well, that could be. But I just thought of something, George. Would you be willing to stay here alone till I get back? Sure, I've stayed here alone before. But where are you going? I'm going to ride back to Bear Creek. Won't take too long. All right. One king. Why, look here, George. What is it? The bolt on this door. Didn't you say you broke in here when you came to find Pierre? Yes, I did. I... The bolt's been fixed. Yes. Well, we'll go along now. Bolt the door after we leave. I'll knock when I get back. Let's go, King. Easy, fellas. Steady now. Get up there. As Sergeant Preston rode along the trail toward Bear Creek after leaving the constable in the mysterious cabin, the thought that had come into his mind was still uppermost. Maybe I have a crazy idea. It's my one chance to get a line on what happens at the cabin. I should have thought of it at the time when Kendall made that remark in the store. Yeah, maybe you will sometime. But I guess even the constable got shook up a bit to find Lunette's hat in a cabin that was locked up from the inside. George says he didn't mention that hat. Now I'll find out what Mrs. Millett has to say. Get up, fella. Come on, kids. Upon his arrival in Bear Creek, Sergeant Preston went to the cabin of Mrs. Millett and pulled rein. Hold there. Hold on. Wait here, King. I hate to get her out of bed, but I've got to find out whom she told about that hat. Sergeant Bristol, you, you bring news already? No, Mrs. Millette. I came back to ask you a very important question. Oui. Your answer may give me a clue to the whole situation. But of course. What is the question, Sergeant? Now think carefully. Did you at any time mention that the constable found Pierre's hat locked in the cabin up the canyon? But no, Sergeant, I did not. I spoke to no one about it. That is the truth. I see. That's all I want to know. I think I have an idea of what... Constable Gordon, I left him there alone. But I do not understand. I can't stop to explain now. Thanks for answering my question. Goodbye. You've got to hurry, King. There's no time to lose. Steady, follow. Get up there. Come on now. 
Sergeant Preston raced back at top speed along the trail to the canyon cabin, with King running alongside the galloping horse. Sometime later, he arrived at the cabin. Hold there, hold. Come on, King. Sarge! Sarge! Doesn't answer. We'll have to break in, King. Here goes. He's not here. I was afraid of that. All right, King. Find Constable Gordon. Hurry, fella. King's scratching on the floor near that back wall. Those old caribou hides on the wall. I'll pull them down. <laughs> that log wall. Let's see. At first glance, the rear log wall looked natural. Then Sergeant Preston noticed that unlike most cabins, short logs had been placed end to end to form the back wall instead of the usual single long logs. He noticed, too, that the logs were pieced together in the center of the wall so that their ends formed a straight line from the floor almost to the ceiling. Above that, the uniformity didn't exist. He placed his hand against the crack a moment. Uh, slight draft coming through. That means an opening behind that wall. This must be some sort of a doorway if I can find out how to make it open. Pushing on one log after another, Sergeant Preston looked for the hidden means of making the logs move. I know I'm right. It's the only explanation. While Sergeant Preston worked patiently on the logs, King sniffed along the base of the log wall. Suddenly, he grew excited as he sniffed at a knot on one of the logs. He found that the scent of the man Kendall, whom he had disliked in the store, was very strong at that point, and he tried to test Master. What is it, King? What is it, fella? Let's have a look. Oh, that knot. I wonder. Reaching down, Preston pushed. That did it. He found a way to open the door, and there is an opening behind it into the cliff, a cave. Easy, King. Easy, boy. Sergeant Preston stood a moment waiting and looking into the cave opening. He saw a glimmer of light some distance back, but so far no one had seemingly noticed that he had found the cave entrance. Taking his gun in his hand, he started forward with King at his side. Sergeant Preston will find you sooner or later, Kendall. Quiet, fella, quiet. Yeah, the old sourdough who built that secret door did us a favor, eh, sir? Yeah, it was a lucky day for us when we caught him with that door open. That prospector disappeared a year ago. You were the one, Kendall, who passed out the word he left 40 miles because his claim didn't pan out. He disappeared, all right. We buried him right in this cave where you'll end up, Constable. You know too much. Getting too nosy. There's plenty of gold in this mountain all along this ridge. Again, the other way is a good deal. I can manage to get it all in my name later on. <laughs> yeah, and on the side, we picked up quite a bit in furs and gold we took from fools who stayed the night out in that cabin, too. <laughs> hey, the horses seem restless. wonder why. Yeah, they're all right. Let's get rid of this Monty now. No use keeping him around to use up food. I'll plug him right now, Gus. Oh, you don't? Somebody shot me. Keep down, sir. Sergeant Preston could see the group back in the cave. Uh, a lantern stood on a table, and on the far side, the constable was sitting on a chair. At the sound of the shot, Gus Kendall sprang behind the constable and pointed his gun at his head. All right, Preston, I know it's you. Come in closer. But if you try anything more, I'll put a bullet into the constable. You can't hit me while I'm behind him. Come on, kid. Neat little plan you have here, Kendall. But you're through. We'll take you in for murder. <laughs> you won't take me in, Marty. Wait, fella. Don't be too sure of yourself, Kendall. Drop your gun by the time I count three or I'll plug the constable. One. As Gus Kendall counted, Preston placed his hand on King while the other held his gun and pointed at Kendall. Two. Both Mounties knew that Kendall meant what he said. The constable, who was tied hand and foot, moved restlessly as he waited for the bullet he expected to crash into his head from behind. All right. I gave you a chance to save your mounty friend, Preston. Looks like you don't want to take it. As Kendall talked, Sergeant Preston closed his fingers on King's back for a moment. Easy, King. Quiet now. The intelligent dog knew it was a signal indicating that the time had come to act. Well, what about it, Mount? Kendall, gazing intently and triumphantly at Sergeant Preston, didn't notice the gray form of the husky as King crouched down and then moved off into the shadows to one side. <laughs> it's time for the last count, Mounty. Sergeant Preston saw that King had circled around the table and was directly in line with Kendall. And even as Kendall's lips formed the word three... No, King! King sprang forward with a low... 
Like a shot, the great dog moved forward. And before Kendall realized what had happened, King leaped in his gut arm and knocked him off his feet. Take him off! Take him off! Down, King! Down, fella! All right, Kendall, get up. That, that husky, I, I didn't see him in the shadows. Watch him, King boy. I'll cut those cords, George. There. Man alive, King sure moved fast. I forgot about him. But how did you get wise, Sergeant? I remember that Kendall spoke about Pierre's hat in the locked cabin. You said you hadn't told anyone. I went to ask Mrs. Mullet, and she hadn't either. I figured then that Kendall knew the secret of this place. Kendall, where is Pierre Mullet? If you've killed him, too... No, Pierre's not dead. Shut up, Sam. We kept him here a while. Then after the constable found his hat and went away, we took him to Gus's cabin in 40 Mile. He's tied up there. I told you to shut up. Gus planned to make him sign over his claim. It was his idea. That's enough out of both of you. George, well, take these killers to 40 Mile and then send Pierre home to his wife. I guess after that you can get the evidence together to make a murder charge against these two. I sure can, Sergeant. I knew if you and King came here, you'd soon get to the root of the trouble we were having. Glad we could help, George. And I'm certain King's as happy as I am to say this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Fellas and girls, don't miss out on all the fun. Build the new Quaker model farm. Yes, get 46 detailed scale models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. These exciting models are yours at no extra cost. You get them on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are eight different packages in all. And you get as many as six models to a single package. Models like Farmhouse itself, Big Red Barn with Sliding Door, Tractor, Shetland Pony, and many, many others. Just remember, you get these exciting models at no extra cost on packages of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the luck of the Newtons. When Ben Newton made a gold strike and left his wife and little son alone overnight in their cabin, he didn't expect anything unusual to happen. But it turned out to be a night of terror for them both, taking King and me into unlooked-for danger against a couple of tough killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. You boys or girls will certainly want to feed your dog kennel ration. And your dog will really eat up kennel ration fast. It's made with choice cuts of lean red meat, U.S. government-inspected horse meat. This famous dog food contains vital minerals and all known dog health vitamins your dog needs. Tell mom to start with kennel ration right away. See how happy your dog is when he gets this food he loves. Have mom get kennel ration first in canned dog food. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>